kids are excited about or consumer is making a comeback and there is no uh, you know sweat in the brow so to speak about what is happening to energy prices uh, can we afford to ignore what is happening in the energy complex given that it will have direct ramifications for india for consumer and the macros um uh, morning guys uh no, we cannot afford to ignore what is happening at that end. I think it's very simple. I think you've had a, a hard metals commodity rally, which was very significant for a period of time. You had the softer commodities going, and now you have the energy space going. Um, so more than just in itself, I think the fact that input prices across the board have, have gone up, um, I think is going to be at some point in time a little bit of a challenge. So I think that is something you definitely need to keep your eye on. Uh, and you need to keep an eye on the impact it potentially has on aggregate demand, right? That said, I think what the market is cheering is that as a, as at this point in time, aggregate demand or at least high-end demand does not seem to have been impacted. If anything, it is actually coming back a little sharper than what people had anticipated. But bottom line, you know, I think it's a mix of the two. If there is great, if there is good demand, I think it needs to be valued up. But if there is a cost element that is coming through. You need to wait and see, you know, how that tends to play through. Are you a bit surprised with the kind of uh, indications we've got from a Shoba or a Bajaj Finance or for that matter, Marico? They're consumer facing businesses and they're pointing to great recovery, a great recovery for the quarter gone by, which by the way, does not capture Diwali Dashira sales also. Um, I, I think yes and no, right? At some level, you're seeing a little bit of this is at the higher end stuff like Shoba, some of the other developers. Uh, there could be a little bit of a wealth effect that is coming through. So I think to some extent, that itself should not be that much of a surprise. As you move a little lower down or to the broader end of the market, whether it is the Bajaj, uh, Bajaj or whether it is the Maricos, uh, to some extent, I think if you're seeing well above expected numbers, um, then I think that is a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a uh, positive, uh, simply because I think it's the broader market that has been seen to be a little bit more at risk uh, rather than necessarily the top end. Uh, so I would say, I think at the end of the day, the commentary that we've seen leading into and some of the data uh, releases that have happened uh, leading into this result season have probably been a little ahead of expectations. I think that said, we need to step back a little bit also. Uh, you know, I think what this measures is the pace of rebound uh, rather than necessarily the level of rebound. And by that, I mean, I think in most of these companies, most of these businesses, at best, you're reaching pre-pandemic levels, which is basically two years ago. Uh, and that is lagging what you've tended to see a little bit in the developed markets. Because while it might not have been so sharp in the most recent months, I think it, the, the, the revival has been a little longer there. And most of those economies are tending to see activity levels which are a little higher than pre-pandemic levels, whereas as far as India is concerned, we are still getting there. Uh, so I think in some, to some extent, I think the, the lower starting level in India is reflecting in better, better numbers and better rebounds than what people have anticipated. But big picture, I think there's still a little bit of catching up to do. Uh, I would also believe, uh, you know, this uh, uh, Diwali season, this Dashera season is actually important to watch because I think by now, all the disruptive effects, whether it is on the base or whether it is largely in the form of pent up, a lot of that would have actually tended to play out. So I think this is going to be a good reflection of A, the level of demand and where you've seen shifts in demand. And I think that is very, very important to catch from a stock perspective. Uh, uh, in terms of where the demand is beating expectations and where it's lagging, even if aggregates tend to look a little okay. Aditya, good morning. Just uh, building on that front as well, and uh, as we head into the earnings season, uh, we've now heard veiled profit warnings from a company like Nestle, where you know, the chairman Suresh Narayanan has pretty much hinted at that. Marico, while giving such a great Q2 update, has also talked about margins uh, maybe you know, being under pressure for a year. So going into this earnings season and the way the consumption stocks have been performing, how should one approach this space? I would tend to believe with a little bit of caution, right? Both because on the demand side, you know, again, 
I think, you know, the way the economy has reacted and rebounded, we are still looking at aggregates. We've still not got a good enough sense of what's happened within, right? Whether one end is doing well and the other isn't, or, you know, both are average or, 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 or whatever that mix is, right? So I think as far as the demand side is concerned, to some extent, the jury is still out. As far as the cost side is concerned, I think, um, you know, the writing is on the wall that it is going to be a little difficult for the next one or two quarters. So in that context, I would generally tend to be a little cautious in terms of the consumer facing ends of it, uh, simply because you're getting this mix, which is not a great mix, uh, uh, which is effectively likely to play out, right? I think trends, as I said, trends within, whether it is the wealth effect, whether it is a certain level of premiumization, I think those are trends that are likely to consolidate a little bit in this quarter. Uh, and to that extent, I think businesses will tell you uh, or depending on where businesses lie, I think the outlook might just be a little different. But I think a lot, you know, this entire earnings season, if you see the headline numbers that we are expecting, for instance, is closer to about 37%. But you strip out the banks and the commodities, that number is looking more like 12%, right? And if you were to really take a two-year two CAGR, it's actually more like 4%. So I think a lot is, that is, is, is what lies in between. Uh, and I think that's what we've got to watch for. So then if you're saying net net 4%, let's say talk about banking, for example, isn't that a big opportunity because the financials have started doing better. Look at the kind of Q2 updates uh, that we are getting, whether it is from a Bajaj Finance to an HDFC bank. And the fact is that the financial stocks have been laggards uh, in the stock markets recently, maybe except for Bajaj Finance. But quite honestly, that's a space that we like, right? We do believe that at the end of the day, um, uh, a, a growth cycle has to reflect in the banking sector and to some extent the banking sector has to sto show steam if the growth cycle is effectively to sustain. Uh, so in that context we do believe it is a little bit of a laggard from a, from a market price perspective. We do believe there should be a certain amount of catch up but we do also believe that you need to start seeing loan growth come through at some point in time. What you're seeing in terms of bank earnings at this point in time, at least relative to, uh, at least if I'm going to go by expectations, is that it's really a credit cost driven story at this point in time, a low base effect uh, element that is playing through at this point in time. The underlying health of it or the underlying tie-in with a perceived economic upswing, right, needs to reflect as far as credit growth is concerned. And to some extent, big picture, I think, that's where you might have a little bit of a challenge in the sector, even though we like it, which is, you know, are you going to get growth, which is not necessarily linked to credit, as has been the case with all historical cycles, whether it is in India or whether it is globally, right? So I think that's something that you might need to watch for a little bit. But otherwise, big picture, our sense is you're just going to start seeing a little bit of an uptick as far as credit is concerned. Once you see that, uh, the markets are going to, to, to reward that space a little more than, than they have in the recent past. Okay. Just wanted to understand, you know, um, Aditya, given that you continue to be positive on IT specifically, no. and I ask this because from tomorrow we're going to officially kickstart the earnings season as well with TCS. Where within IT can you see exponential growth from here onwards? Or do you think because of the digitization of uh, the world, not just India, uh, IT in any case is going to be an engine which is going to chug along and lead the other sectors? You know, I, I think the latter part of your argument is absolutely right. You don't have to look for pockets of growth or regions for, of growth or specific businesses that will provide you growth. At the moment, what you're seeing in every economy, and we see it in our own economy, is that there is just a significant shift to digitization, to people, you know, just depending so much more on IT in some form or the other, right? And I think the good thing about that sector, and that's why we are very comfortable with it, is that we think this demand cycle is going to sustain for at least three to four years, okay? There's been a lot of emphasis on the cost cycle and some of the, 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 the wage pressures. Our general sense is if demand looks as good as it does uh, for a fairly sustained period of time and that it is not dependent on you know, a, sub, a segment or a sub-segment or a region, 
you are sitting very, very comfortably. Uh, uh, and uh, there will always be some businesses that are tied in better, whether they are companies or their areas of expertise. But I think by and large, the demand outlook is global, right? It is going to sustain. Uh, and you've seen the best of it as far as front end tech is concerned, you know, a lot of the uh, a, a lot of the IPO kind of stuff or a lot of, um, you know, pure consumer tech that has taken the, the lead. But the reality is there's a much, much bigger pool outside or, or behind, right, which does the support for this, which enables all of this, which is, I think, going to be actually benefited in a much broader sense. And that's where the IT guys actually come in. Uh, I, I think interestingly, again, from a stock perspective and where we are comfortable relative to the, to, I, I would say, parts of the market, is that we do believe that while you do have supply challenges that you could see risk to, to, to margins in this quarter, the reality is the, the supply side of people is being oiled pretty aggressively. Uh, and I think it's a matter of a couple of quarters before that you know, focus tends to ease off uh, and you start looking at really the expansion of the pie that is happening. And the fact that given that the expansion in the demand pie is so rapid, uh, what is less stated is the fact that a lot of these companies have suddenly got a lot of pricing power. Uh, and that tends to nullify any of the cost uh, challenges that you face. So bottom line, I think it is a global swing. It is a sustainable swing for the next three to four years. The supply side is looking closer to starting to ease off than, than get worse. Uh, and I think that's very supportive for valuation frameworks. And it's very supportive for Indian businesses, which are really at the top of it. Uh, uh, you know, just just they're just competitive, they are global, uh, and they've got their eyes on this pie. So in many senses, you know, we had a fair amount of discussion as far as domestic demand is concerned and the numbers are, that are there. We're just more comfortable with this kind of demand, which you don't need to necessarily track on a quarterly basis uh, uh, and that it is broad based. So the risks will be very limited. Going forward, Aditya, I mean, given the pace and the speed of the rally, you know, not just from March 2020 lows, but in this year itself, or for that matter, in the month gone by, uh, does it make sense to be market cap agnostic? Or would you say that are we going to see a structural shift towards the premium end of the market, as has happened globally with many world markets? Okay, I think what you've tended to see with the rally in India over the last couple of months, um, which has also been marked by significant outperformance relative uh, to the rest of the world, uh, you've had a very large element of, you know, the, the mid caps or, or, or the small mid caps and the smaller caps take more of the lead, right? Now, we wouldn't play it entirely by market cap. Uh, at some level, sectors and business lines and companies are probably easier to play at this point in time of the cycle. But if one were to look at it from a sector cap, from a market cap perspective, we would at this point in time, given relative valuations between the two segments, be a little bit more comfortable with the leaders uh, or the larger caps or the more obvious beneficiaries of the underlying consolidation that is taking place in the market, right? I think this was a little extreme about a month ago and you've seen some kind of a retracement and a rebalance uh, since then. Uh, but by and large, we'd still be a little bit more comfortable with the larger caps uh, and the leaders rather than the mid caps, even though I think the time to really define it sharply by market cap probably has just passed a little bit. So much for joining us today live on the market. It's always a pleasure talking to you. We're going to take a short commercial break, but as we do that, we leave you with market.